Hello and welcome to this video on thermodynamic properties and the fact that they're all related. At the end of this video you'll be able to explain what fundamental property relations and Maxwell equations are and substitute an equation of state into an equation for du. So where we left off in the previous lecture was with how we can write total differentials for both internal energy and enthalpy. Now what we get is we see that our heat capacity is a useful term in these equations but we're left with this bit which we don't actually have equations for at the moment because we don't have our u equals and h equals equations that we're able to take the partial differential of. So we need some strategies for getting these bits out of our equations for dh and for du if we want to be able to calculate changes in these variables. Now to, to kick this off what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, what we call fundamental property relations. And so the first of these comes from looking at a closed system, so a fixed amount of stuff, and the first law for that system. So this is something that we've done previously. So the first law for this system is given at the top here. And then if we insert the definition of entropy, then what we're left with is the, uh, the fundamental property relation between U, S and V. Now this is the first of our fundamental property relations. To get the one that involves enthalpy, then what we do is we insert this fundamental property relation into our definition of enthalpy. And when we do that, it simplifies down to give us our uh, fundamental property relationship between enthalpy, entropy and pressure. And so we can continue to, to do this so we can get fundamental property relationships for the Helmholtz free energy and we can get fundamental property relationships for the Gibbs free energy. Now what all these things have in common is that they depend on the first law. They use the definitions of thermodynamic variables and they're defined by the total derivatives of those variables. Okay, so, so these are the things that give us the fundamental property relationship. So they're based on the first law that is always true and they're based on the definitions which are always true of course because we made them up. Now we can use those fundamental property relationships to help us get some a little bit further down the road to fixing up those du and dh equations. And so if we go back to our first fundamental uh, property equation, so our uh, du t ds minus p to v, okay, and so whilst we've got this relationship we also know that the total differential for internal energy has to be equal to uh, our partial differential of internal energy with respect to uh, entropy at constant volume okay ds plus the uh, partial differential of internal energy and with respect to volume at constant entropy dv. Okay now if we compare the two equations what we see is that this term here must equal temperature and that this term here must equal to negative pressure. And so now we have uh, new equalities that result from the use of the partial differential equations and the fundamental relations. So we can say that, uh, that the partial differential of U with respect to entropy, constant volume, is equal to temperature. 
and we can say that the uh, partial differential of u with respect to volume at constant entropy is equal to negative pressure. Okay, and so so these are important property relations. And so if you went through and did these with the other fundamental properties, then you would get this whole collection of fundamental property relations here. Okay. Now, using these, we can extend them even further using something called Maxwell equations. And so to, to get our Maxwell equations, what we're using is we're using the fact that to take the derivative of something, uh, it's not important in what order you actually take the derivative. Okay, so, so we can say that uh, du ds uh, and then with respect to v is equal to du to v and then with respect to s. Now from the previous page we know that this term here is actually equal to temperature. And then here we know that this term here is actually equal to pressure. And so then we can say that uh, to T to V uh, at constant S and to P dS at constant V are actually equal to each other. Okay? And this is what we call the Maxwell relation. And so when we go through and do this for each of the fundamental property relations, we get the four Maxwell equations down the bottom. Okay, and these are and these are useful things for deriving what we're about to derive. But they give you a good idea of how all our thermodynamic properties are all interrelated. And so if you flick open a thermodynamics textbook, what you find is you have all these different relationships that exist. So this set so all this comes from Sandler, uh, I should say. So so this setup here are all our thermodynamic uh, properties that we've defined because they're useful. Heat capacities, uh, compressibilities, thermal expansion coefficients, so forth and so on. Then we have our uh, Maxwell relations and then also our thermodynamic identities. Okay, and so we just derived all these. These are very useful. And then we can use them to derive larger equations that are actually useful for us and so we'll actually be deriving this equation in just a moment with the help of those previous ones and then uh, Sandler decided that these ones were useful as well okay so there are thousands of property relationships they're all related to each other it's like digging up a gigantic family tree if you dig back far enough you're bound to find that they're related in some way Now, if we want to calculate changes in U, okay, so we remember back when we said, okay, the, the total differential of U is this equation up the top here, okay, and so we can get one bit of it by using the definition of the heat capacity, but this is where we were stuck, okay, we, we didn't know how to do this part. And so what we can do is we can then use our fundamental property relationship, okay, so we're replacing U with T delta S P delta V, and then we can expand that out, okay, so we've got pressure now, okay, that's good, we've got equations for pressure with the equations of state, but we're still left with this term here, so how do we get rid of that? Our next step is to use a Maxwell property relation. And so now we can see actually something very useful. So now we've, instead of an S and a V, we've got a pressure term in here. Okay, and a pressure term is good because we have equations of state. When we substitute these things all in, what we're left with is this equation for the total differential of U. And this is very useful because we've got heat capacity 
and then a term that changes with pressure and then our other term is just the pressure okay we can get all these things okay so we can get them all from equation from our equation of state okay and then if we want to calculate a change in u then we just need to integrate these parts okay so we're just integrating this term over here and so to, to populate this equation, I'm just going to give an example on the next slide. So the example I'm going to use here is the van der Waals equation of state. So I've got the van der Waals equation of state here. And so this term substitutes directly into here. And so now I need to get my partial differential term. So to P to T at fixed volume is equal to R over V minus B. Okay, so my A on V squared term doesn't have any uh, any temperature term in it. So, so this one here then substitutes into here. And so if I do that then, then my T to P T constant volume minus P is equal to RT over V minus B minus okay so I'm left with negative A on V squared and so then for my uh, total differential I'm left with okay just putting in the lines Okay, so, so it's a fairly complicated equation to start with and it simplifies down quite nicely with the van der Waals equation. So to recap what we've done in this video, all thermodynamic properties are related to each other in one way or another. It's possible to derive these relationships from the first law, thermodynamic definitions and partial differentials and there are thousands of relationships you can come up with. We use some of these relationships to come up with an equation for the change in internal energy that uses CV and an equation of state, which is information that we have. Thanks for your time.